Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we are going to be returning to the Philips CDI, and uh, this is a console that, you know, I think is pretty misunderstood. You know, a lot of people think that this was intended only for video games when really this was like a multimedia experience. Um, and yeah, there are some really terrible games on this console, but I think, you know, like I said, it's misunderstood. There are some interesting games on here that are a lot of fun. Uh, so today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be installing this new CDI 450 or 550 RGB mod. This is made by Mobius Strip Tech and was recently open sourced. Uh, so now it's available, I think, from at least one other vendor. And what it does is it taps into the Philips CDI and allows it to output RGB. Uh, so this gives you the highest quality analog video possible from a CDI. Um, so Previously, there weren't really any good solutions for this model. Um, so for those of you that are aware, there are lots of different models of this console. Um, some of them very easily output RGB with a modification, but this particular version, there wasn't really a good solution for doing this until now. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing apart and I'm going to walk you through step by step on how I do this installation. And, uh, and then afterwards we'll take a look and see how the video quality looks and play some good old Zelda CDI. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Okay, so of course, because it's a CDI, taking this thing as part is actually not straightforward. <laughs> so if you flip it upside down, you see that there are these little rubber feet here, and you might think that there are screws hiding underneath there, but I took a little peek, and no, there are not. <laughs> so this is apparently how you take this thing apart. You have to open up the... Um, you have to open up the CD drive here, and you'll see that already that there are two holes here, and underneath there, there are some hex screws. And then, apparently, underneath this little cartridge slot here, this is where the digital video goes, if you've got that module. This particular unit does not. But you kind of like just, as you saw, you just push like with my thumbs here, and then just kind of angle it up. And, and then you can see that there are two more screws hiding over here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, these four screws, and I believe that's what I need in order to open this thing up. All right, so that actually did turn out to be what we needed to do. So, wow, this has a huge RF shield here. Um, so let me see if I can just pry that out. I think it's actually just held in place by friction. And then you've got your laser assembly right here. And so I'm going to go ahead and take these things apart. All right, so the laser is unhooked from that little holding clip that was there. And now I think I just need to pull on this. Yep, that's about it. All right, there we go. This RF shield is out. And look at that. It is very nicely organized. So you can see that, you know, CDI, or Philips rather, they... Um, they have these little dividers on the solder mask that break the chips, or break the board down into different functions. Like you can see here, this is digital video here. Um, all of them have um, information about what the function of each location is. That's really nice, actually. Um, so yeah, that's that's cool. So what we're going to do next is disassemble, get the, the laser out of the way. And so you just have to unhook these cables that are right here being held into place by a clip. And then when you lift it up right over here, there is a port where the laser attaches to the motherboard. So you just pull these bales upward and then pull this out. And then this is what I believe is supplying power. And you just have to pull that. And now the laser assembly is safely removed. Okay, so what you see here, this is the power switch that turns the console on or off. And this little plastic piece is what attaches to the physical switch that turns it on or off. So these two things are attached together. So in order to actually take the system out of the case, you have to separate them. So you have to kind of push down on the blue part of the switch at the same time you're pulling up on the plastic. And so now these two are fully disconnected from each other. And so now I can finally get this thing out of the case. All right, so before I get started, I kind of wanted to just show you what my plan is. So this here is the video encoder, which you cannot possibly miss because it's very clearly written. And we're going to be tapping all the signals that we need from here. So we're going to be getting RGB and sync. We're going to be getting, uh, I believe, power and ground. And uh, there's also an RGB enable pin that needs to be tapped. And then sync in this particular chip is horizontal sync and vertical sync. And the mod board 
converts that into standard um, C-Sync, and you have options of outputting either TTL level C-Sync or 75 ohm um, terminated C-Sync. And you can see that this chip right here is huge, and it's a nice little base where you can put this down. And so, ideally, I think the you know the install docs recommend that you just drop this down right here. And, and then you can just tap in all your necessary wires, bring them into the board, and then from here you've got your output. And then, of course, the next question is, well, where am I going to put that? So over here you can see these are the standard video output cables or ports. We have composite video and then we have stereo sound. So what I'm thinking about doing, and uh, you know this is, this is a really nice way to do it without cutting any holes in the, in the console, is to, um, to take this Genesis 9-pin mini DIN port and place it here in the same place as where the composite video goes. That way you can obtain composite video, you can also obtain RGB, and uh, this would make it compatible with pretty much everything, including the HD RetroVision Genesis Model 2 cables. Um, so, so yeah, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and get started with um, getting all the necessary signals I need from, from this chip. Okay, so I know this looks like a complete spaghetti mess of wires, but um, that's, you know, by intention because I'm going to be cleaning up this in a few minutes. But before I did, I wanted to just talk about all of these connections. So you can see these three wires here, the red, green, and blue, and so that's R, G, and B, respectively. And those are all connected to one side of a resistor. And so this is, you know, the same as connecting it directly to the chip but much easier because as you can see, this area is probably the worst part for soldering because you have this big digital port connector right here. And so you have a lot of, you know, it's a tight space. It's tough to work. So uh, connecting it to this resistor here is what's recommended in the install documents and it totally makes sense. Uh, this capacitor right here, this is where ground is. So you just make a connection right over there for ground. Um, these two over here, this is horizontal and vertical sync, and here you have a lot of space, so you can solder directly to the legs of the chip to get horizontal and vertical sync. Um, this white wire over here, this is the RGB enable pin, and so with this um, video encoder, you actually have to, um, I, I don't know if you have to pull that, that pin high, or you have to do something to that, that pin in order to enable RGB. So that has to be connected to the mod chip as well. And then finally, there's this last connection here, and uh, yeah, that's called VAA. I'm not sure entirely what that is needed for, but it's definitely part of the installation. So now that that's all set, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the, uh, the mod board on top of this chip using some adhesive, um, some double-sided uh, tape that I have, which is pretty strong. So I'll put that in place, and then once that's all set, I'm going to go ahead and start trimming these wires and installing them onto the board.
Okay, so now that the mod chip has been installed, um, there's a few final things that we need to do. First thing is, I'm gonna have to remove this AV port entirely, and I'm gonna clip off this composite video portion of it, so we'll just have stereo sound. And the um, Genesis Model 2 connector is gonna go here in its place, and then we're gonna send RGB and sync over to it. Uh, let me just flip over the bottom here. This is another portion of um, this is the underside of the console. So we, we actually have to do one final thing too. So in order to enable RGB video, we're going to have to remove this little resistor right here. And thankfully that's easy. Um, it's also worth mentioning too that if you do this and your console has S-Video, you are going to lose S-Video. But I mean, compared to RGB, that's pretty much worth it in my opinion. This particular unit only has composite, so you don't lose anything by pulling that resistor. But uh, yeah, there we go. Everything is removed now, and and that's that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to be doing is removing this AV port right here. Okay, so here's the back of the system, and I realized after test fitting the 9-pin mini DIN that this hole is actually a little bit too small. So I think I'm going to have to widen this out, but the good thing is, is that it's just this inner portion that needs to be removed. The outer portion here can stay exactly the way that it is. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'm going to use this stepper drill to uh, accomplish that. Hopefully I won't bump into the camera too much as I, as I work on this. Okay, so I've got the uh, mini DIN held in place just by my hand, and so you can see when I've got it test fitted there, everything looks really good. It looks like it was originally there and nothing uh, has been done to modify this console whatsoever. So you can see there it is right there, no problem. Um, so what I'm going to do now in order to attach this thing is I'm going to scrape away at the solder mask over here. This is ground, and so I can use this as a way of anchoring this port onto the board in a very permanent kind of way. Um, there is one issue though, which is that this little via right here, this is composite video. So I don't actually want to ground out composite video, so there's m maybe two ways that I can handle this. One way would be to cover this up with something like Kapton tape, and this would protect um, from any kind of contact with with the um, composite video the other option would be maybe to cut a trace under the on, on the other side of the board to separate this via from the composite video signal which is actually one of these um, three pins right here so I'm gonna consider which option I'm gonna take and I'm gonna do that and then at that point we'll go ahead and scrape the solder mask and attach the um, mini din to the motherboard Okay, so I decided to go with the trace cutting option because the trace is right here and it's very simple to cut it and isolate this from the rest of the board. So I'm just going to go ahead with my with my um, scalpel, just run it across the trace a few times and then confirm under the microscope that everything is cut. You can also use a multimeter and make sure that everything is cut as well. Okay, so you guys can hopefully see that this is now very securely attached to the motherboard. And um, what I was basically doing was using a mixture of a fiberglass pen and a scalpel to just scrape away at the solder mask for the ground plane right here. And then I heated up the whole area and just added a 
small little amount of solder underneath and that's just to help make everything attach and then on the sides here you can see I used a very large amount of solder to lock everything in so it's mostly locked in on this side and then to some extent underneath as well and this should keep everything nice and secure and centered and that should get us all set for for mounting this so now the final thing I need to do is I need to take um, make a few changes over here so I'm gonna have to specifically remove and bridge a couple of resistors these three over here I believe and I'm also gonna have to do the same thing for some capacitors as well the reason why is because um, we're gonna be using Genesis cables and those are built in with uh, 220 ohm uh, capacitors and 75 ohm resistors that's all a part of it I believe those are the values it may be different but but anyhow um, because those components are built into Genesis RGB cables we don't need them um, here on the board so I'm gonna remove those and we're also gonna go ahead and wire everything up including composite video to this multi out um, you can see here we have RGB and sync we have left and right channel audio this is ground we're going to be tapping left and right channel audio from these these ports over here, these these vias. Um, and then for sync, we're going to be using this TTL pad right here, not the 75 ohm. Um, so yeah, if you were using a different kind of connector, like an NES RGB, like 8-pin connector, you would be doing this a little bit differently. Um, but uh, the install documents explain the differences between what I'm doing here and uh, that type of installation. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with wiring in the final connections. Okay, so I'm back with a quick little update. So I thought I was all finished and I was getting started to reassemble the case and put the RF shield back on and all that kind of good stuff. And I ran into some problems. So what I didn't realize is that the upper half of the shell has a little plastic lip that fits right over here and it comes down. And that was getting in the way. So, so you know, this little connector board that I had, which makes it easy to solder to all the various pins. Um, it's great, but unfortunately it was too long. It was bumping into that plastic stuff. And I didn't want to cut the shell. I wanted to leave the shell the way it was. Uh, so I decided to remove that using some chip quick. And then I took all of those wires that were going to it and I put them in their correct spaces on the, um, on the, on the uh, nine pin mini din over here. There's also another thing I realized I was missing as well. So um, in order to use Genesis RGB cables, you have to have five volts running to them because those five volts are needed for the um, for the capacitors that are built into the RGB lines into the cable. So I needed a source for five volts. And so if you can see over here, this this yellow wire, I'm sorry, orange wire here. This is VAA in the schematics. And this is the source of 5 volts for the video encoder chip. It also provides 5 volts for the um, RGB board as well. So I, I know that this is 5 volts, and it connects directly to this pin right over here, which I believe is pin 61. Um, so both of those supply 5 volts. And so what I decided to do is just tap from the chip from pin 61 all the way over to here. And so this is 5 volts right here. So, so now the connector has 5 volts. It has all those correct signals. And I can properly close the case. So I'm going to go ahead, shut the case, and then let's see if this thing works. All right, so I've got the CDI connected to my OSSC and I'm um, outputting RGB and I can tell you that it looks pretty damn awesome. I mean, the colors are really crisp. Everything looks nice and sharp and perfect. Uh, so, so yeah, I have to say that, you know, this, this mod does an excellent job of outputting RGB on the CDI. Um, so yeah, I now have uh, Link the Faces of Evil to mess around with and uh, this game is really bad, but it's bad in a funny kind of way, so I definitely recommend trying it out if you get a chance. Um, Alright, so that's it for this installation. Um, so if you guys like this kind of content, then definitely consider subscribing to the channel. I have videos like this out every Friday. 
Um, definitely let me know what you think in the comments below. And you can also check out my website, which is oneuprestorations.com, if you've got stuff that you want repaired or modified. Okay, so yeah, thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.